Hey guys, so welcome back to the channel. So as promised, we're starting this new series that I'm going to be calling the Psycho River Killer because this story has been consuming Korea right now. This relatively young couple, a girl who's 31 and her boyfriend who's only 30 years old are in custody right now being investigated for the possible murder of this girl's so-called husband. But the question is, was this husband, who is no longer here on this earth, drowned on purpose for insurance money? Or was it an innocent accident? Now, there are a lot of moving parts to this, and it's so creepy, and there are so many intersections of the themes of our channel that we're going to go over. Namely, if you haven't brushed up on any of the other videos, I suggest you do it because this has the themes of, yes, the secrets of the room salon girls, the Yoon Suk Yeol's wife, the psychopathic traits, and the SJM videos. All of those seem to intersect in this case. But in this first video, I just want to go over what happened that night, who the players are, and why it's so crazy. So mainly, who is the guy who died? This guy, at the time of death, was about 39 or 40, basically 11 years older than his so-called wife. We're calling it a so-called wife because they were calling them weekend couples. It looked like she basically got into a sham marriage for, with him and was siphoning off his money. We'll go into all of that in another video, but what had happened? This is June 30th, 2019. A car comes and picks up this dude, and it is his own car. Who's driving it? Not his wife, but his wife's extramarital boyfriend. Crazy, right? The three of them go into this car. Why do they pick him up? Because the wife and the husband aren't even living together. The husband is, you know, like the movie Parasite and they have to live in the basement. So the husband is renting out some very cheap, inexpensive basement apartment near his work, which is in Suwon, which is like an hour south of Seoul while... Her, his wife is living in their newlywed apartment that is a little bit more expensive. That's near Incheon, is in Incheon near the airport, which is like probably like two hours away from Suwon. And presumably living with this extramarital boyfriend and her friends. And so they come along, they pick him up, and then they're going with two other couples. So four people... That, they bear, that he barely knows, it's all friends of this so-called wife. And the so-called wife is essentially the main sociopathic uh, killer that's being accused right now. So they go over to this place called Yongso Waterfall. And it's a nice place where people go for relaxation. And it's in a place called Kapyeong, which has become a really trendy these days for like river rafting water sports and swimming and i guess in this place the key feature is just jumping off the cliffs and uh they call it diving but people are just mainly jumping and they do have lifeguards but the lifeguards go home at around 5 p.m or 6 p.m so they get there around 3 p.m and they're playing around but obviously they are bullying the 
older husband. Everybody is 12 years younger than him. So of course in Korea you know that this is a big deal if you are bullying somebody older than you. But of course they're always chalking it up to, oh we were just joking. A lot of this is on camera. Like they're filming this. They are filming the abuse and they probably scam this but they were saying like oh well one of the games was we didn't have any knives to cut up a watermelon so whoever lost this you know rock paper scissor had to crack open the watermelon with uh their head and of course it had to be the husband how could you even be at this picnic gathering you know like basically put your side piece and also your husband like what kind of sociopath can you be but that is exactly what this girl you know was doing let alone okay we're not even there at the drowning incident yet so they're doing this they're playing games and then when they're in the water we also even have footage of them terrorizing the husband because the key point is the husband did not know how to swim so the husband, when he was in the water, was relying on, you know, that like floating thing, like the inner tube that you use in like a lazy river. And they were purposely like, you know, jostling him around and he was saying, stop it, because if he fell out of it, he could not swim. And I guess he wasn't wearing a life jacket. Also, another thing, he wasn't too smart. He should always have been wearing a life jacket, but most likely he was probably shamed into like, oh, you know, like life jackets are only for little kids or something like that. All right, so they're, you know, eating, they're doing whatever, they're hanging out at the river. And then once it gets dark and once the lifeguards go home, there is some sort of conversation about like, hey, it's around eight o'clock right now. That's a key moment. And they're saying like, hey, let's go diving. The guys should go diving. Now, there's three guys, the boyfriend, the husband. And yes, there were two couples, but I guess only like one of the other guys wanted to go and uh, diving. So there was three guys that eventually agreed to go basically the boyfriend the husband and then one of the other guys from the couples but it took cajoling the husband because he didn't want to go jump into the water because he did not know how to swim and he didn't want to do it and so at this point before you know he, he was convinced to go his wife was like fine then i'll go do it myself and you know she was like you know basically like scolding him and if you will go over many of their texts their phone calls there's a lot of recorded footage of the, the way that they were interacting she's t such a you know sociopathic gaslighter so he's like no 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 i will go horrible mistake i he, he had been so manipulated in his mind uh in you know even like photos like she would send him like with like creepy red lettering like you will never be able to get rid of me you know like something like that so his mind was probably like stockholm syndrome so he went up there the other two guys jumped first and then he jumped last and he did not have a life jacket on and the other, the boyfriend, I guess, had jumped first and had the tube around him. The boyfriend was the one in the tube. If anything, they should have, why did they not give him a life jacket? If you're jumping in the water, you should have been given a life jacket. Wasn't given a life jacket. Number two, if anything, you should have positioned the tube right there for him so that he would have had the tube ready to grab onto the moment he got into the water. It wasn't. And then, so what did happen? They claim that the girls who are watching said that, oh, well, it looked like they were all, you know, coming out, swimming back towards the shore. And so they had turned around and like were looking for cigarettes or something or looking for some other things. And everything seemed to be quiet. So there was nothing going on. 
And then when they turned around, it seemed like, oh no, there was something uh, uh, gone awry that maybe he started to drown or something like that. And then the boyfriend was supposed to move towards, was going to try to save uh, the husband. And then so one of the witnesses, she seemed a little bit more legit. She was saying to the boyfriend, hey, dude, take off of take off the tube and, you know, either throw it to him or swim faster because you're swimming too slowly. And then she was yelling that to the boyfriend and then, you know, because the husband was over here struggling or they couldn't really see because it was dark. Then what was kind of shady was the wife who was right next to this sort of legitimate witness said, hey, hey, come with me, come with me. And then they went all the way up to the bank, supposedly to try to get a lifesaver. And so she brought down a lifesaver and. But and then threw it into the water. But what that did was that took away this girl and left these guys alone in the water. So you don't really know what happened. It took away some of the witnesses on the shore. But what did they did say is after they came back, the girl was like, wait, this is a little bit weird because the distance between the boyfriend and the husband didn't get closer. It got further away. So then 824, that's when the police were called and that's when the police report was filed and they found the husband had drowned. And the official report said that he drowned because his foot got caught in like the rocks or something, but it didn't say anything about like how he couldn't swim. He could not swim. That is the key point. So why are you jumping down into the water where it's not, it's it's at a depth where you have to be able to swim. Otherwise, you will drown. There is no way to just walk out. That's why it's a diving situation there. It's a waterfall area. And so... They did not save him, but their excuse was they thought everything was fine. Now, here's the really, really shady part. Did they or did they not know he could swim? Of course, they knew he could not swim. Now, we will go into more of the other details, but I don't want to leave this out in the first episode because this is way too juicy. This was not the first time they tried to drown him. No, 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 no. In May, so this was in June. In May, they tried to drown him at a fishing spot. Yeah, it didn't work. How did they know even before that, that he did not know how to swim? There's video footage of them going on some trip and he is on a banana boat and he even has a life jacket on and they saw him and you know he seems like a very sensitive guy not good at sports and they saw that even in that situation he could not swim very well and so they saw that he was very vulnerable in the water but you guys that's not even the f second time that they tried to kill him the first time that they tried to kill him on record that we have was in february of that year in 2019 how by poisoning him with puffer fish poison you know like that blowfish that delicacy that you're supposed to cut it in a special way and you know if that restaurant messes up and kills you you know like there there is hell to pay well Apparently, she was able to get her hands on some of that poison and she, in a telegram message, was, you know, messaging her side piece saying like, oh my god, I squeezed so much poison into it, I don't know why he's not dead yet. And each of these instances, the February poisoning, the May fishing accident, came a few days or a week after she had paid her insurance payments on his life insurance they were really not good about 
being regularly paying on time with these life insurance payments but when they you know when she got her act together and paid it those were the times when they were having these strange incidents now why is june 30th absolutely critical because on july 1st that's when the insurance would have expired and it looked like they had not paid the insurance so this was mere hours three and a half hours before the insurance was to expire on about eight hundred thousand dollars worth of insurance he died they knew that he could not swim and they tried to get away with this elaborate plan to get rid of him and on his last day how shameful that she rolls up to his house in his own car driven by her extramarital boyfriend that she's cheating on him with then going and spending his last day on this planet shaming him and embarrassing him making him lose his pride all day making him bang his head on a watermelon and terrorizing him in the water and then making him jump to a very cold watery death all in the name for insurance so that happened in june right how do we know about this well in november she files the insurance claims it doesn't go through because people are very suspicious of her because she up until this point has had a pattern of filing a lot of insurance claims when she's gone traveling saying like oh she's lost like some expensive items so she's already kind of like on this blacklist or kind of like on this watch list of maybe being an insurance fraudster and this looks really suspicious especially with these insurance products that she signed up for they just didn't make sense like why would you get life insurance and have so many life insurance policies because it just wasn't one life insurance policy that was eight hundred thousand dollars it was like a series of about four like they would always have like a series of like two to three to four that they were always trying to make the payments on that totaled anywhere from four hundred dollars to seven hundred dollars a month it was kind of a burden and they were always stressed for money because she was always siphoning money out of and it wasn't it didn't make sense to starve to pay, make the payments on these this type of life insurance product because half of these life insurance products expired when you were 55 years old and then the other half expired when you were 60 years old so it doesn't make any sense because most people do not expect to die at 55 or 60 so this is not something that you are like trying to make a priority to pay it's not like a life or death situation to pay these types of premiums it's not a mortgage if you get if you don't have this product it's not going to change your life it's probably a good thing to get rid of and so it's very suspicious and so the insurance company was not paying they were dragging their heels she started to kind of escalate it and then the insurance company was also escalating it too by throwing it over to the police for investigation and but then she was trying to counter back and so she actually contacted yes hot daddy show at sbs in march of 2020 and so they look into this show and uh, to this situation and then in november of 2020 they air it but they do not take her side they actually think she looks super sus so they air this show she is not happy she gets really mad and she also uh wants to sue them so but then what happens before then is that so that's november of 2020 right so a few months later in february of 2021 the prosecution relaunches an investigation into her 
into this case. And so that's been about a year, right? The prosecution has been looking into this. Well, she even goes and sues Haunt Daddy's show in April of 2021, right when the SJM situation blew up. So think about that. While we were going through the SJM case, she going around and suing Hot Daddy Show for defamation when she's obviously looking really guilty right now, the prosecution has reinvestigated their case. So let this be a message that yes, we could probably even reinvestigate the SJM case. In March of this year, just one month ago, the court has dismissed the wife's suit and even has suit saying that it's fine you know the hot daddy show did nothing wrong they were you know looking into her case legitimately as they should and you know they should have legitimately looked into sjm's case too and next month they're going to continue the investigation and so they have them in custody right now because they've been on the run which we'll also go into they were like in hiding and they were captured also thanks to hot daddy show so hot daddy show could do good if they actually you know worked on the side of justice anyhow that is the intro into what's going on in this crazy case of this girl who this is not her first time and this is not her first boyfriend that has died there's been a string of them this is a very 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 dangerous person no longer on the loose but maybe depending on how our justice system handles this what do you guys think do you want to hear the whole story Leave your comments below. Remember to like, share, and subscribe, and see you again next time. Bye-bye, guys. Tune in next time. Don't forget to subscribe. Find us on YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. Love you.